Hey, good looking. I'm Vixen, and welcome back, or welcome for the first time. In the last episode, this happened. You surprised me. Let the epic story continue. Hello, Gloria. <clears throat> Cinders, are you awake? I'm awake. I'll be right there. I'll get to work in a minute. No, it's not about that. I just need to talk to you. Alright, Gloria. Ding! What is it? What is so important that you have to speak with me at this hour? At this hour? You mean noon? I wanted to speak with you about the way you've been behaving these past few days. Now there goes my nice morning. Or afternoon. Listen. I realize we were never really on the best of terms, but what has been going on recently is something new indeed. If you really think that I will turn a blind eye on all your childish, egotistic, egoistic exploits, then you need to think again! Oh my god. What are you talking about, Gloria? I didn't do anything! Oh, you didn't do anything outright destructive. You are far too smart for that. But do you think I haven't noticed all the little jabs at me? You take every opportunity to undermine my efforts and make my life harder. What? Really, I don't know what's happening to you, Cinders. Do you think I'm stupid or that I don't have any feelings? I think you're a little sensitive. I'm trying to understand you, I really am, but it seems like you are reveling in this chaos you are creating, as if you wanted things to fall apart, despite the efforts of all those who want to keep things together. This is where we differ, Gloria. True, our relationship was never civil, but I think I'm beginning to understand why. We may be a family, but we are not alike. All I'm trying to do is survive in this madhouse as unscathed as possible. What seems like chaos to you is freedom for me. Besides, let's face it, Gloria, things are already broken. Only Carmosa and you are still pretending that you can glue them back together, like some ugly heirloom everybody hates. Typical answer of an angry child. Do you even realize that you have managed to describe the house, all of us, as if it was all about you? It is such a shame that Mother taught me so well about the importance of family. It must have made me naive. Because I still have hope that you will mature one day. Excuse me, mature? Yes, become an adult. A person who is able to grasp a larger picture. Go beyond one's own interests. Also, someone who can sacrifice personal happiness for the greater good of the house, if it is necessary. I don't deny that it can be difficult at times, but we are not children anymore. We must realize how we all depend on Carmosa and support her in any way we can. They never call her mother. Well, sometimes they do. I see. Well, it certainly doesn't play well with my idea of maturity. Especially that part about supporting Carmosa. Of course you would say that. Just like you, Mother can be a difficult person to get along with, I admit. But her intentions are good. Think about the way she's putting all her strength into giving us a good life. And if you still doubt her, try imagining our lives without her. Oh, glorious day. Don't mind if I do. How long do you think this house would last with her gone? You must understand, she won't be here to take to care for us forever. And if I can't do it alone, Cinders, I need your support. Well, she's right at that point, but... Let's try and mend relationships before we outright destroy them. Alright. I see your point, and as much as I hate to accept it, I think it, I can agree with at least part of what you're saying. Of course Carmosa means well, it's her house and we're her daughters after all. At least you are. It's her actions, not her intentions, that I have trouble understanding. But maybe not anymore. Perhaps we're more alike than I've imagined. We're survivors, doing what's necessary to cope with the situation we've been presented with. 
Such insights give you credit, Cinders. They tend to come with age. If that's true, then Carmosa must be really old, and her sight is completely different than mine. That would explain some things, which... Maybe she is a victim of harsh circumstances. Maybe she did have to struggle all the time. And yes, maybe I can't really imagine what she went through. But think about the woman she became. A black widow. So spiteful that she hurts her own children. But cinders! Please, let me finish, Gloria. With all the pain she suffered, there was a lesson there that she missed. Sometimes being nice to people around you can make all the difference in the world. She has no right, no right whatsoever, to turn our lives into hell, Gloria, and you know it. She is how she is, Cinders. She's doing her best to manage everything, and it is a great burden. She can be terrible, but only because life can be terrible to her. You surely don't intend to change her now. Oh yes, no doubt about that. I'm not talking about changing her arachnid nature. I'm talking about changing ours. We could certainly use some improvement in our natures, you know. This picture you are painting in front of my eyes seems pleasant, but also not very realistic. It requires one thing which we do not have. Mutual agreement. And we will not have that as long as we are not of one mind. That is, as long as Sophia keeps up her silly act. Gloria, I doubt that it is Sophia who we should be worrying about in this situation. I'm having trouble picturing her opposed to anything that would bring us more freedom from Carmosa. No, Gloria, it's you. You are the unknown in this equation. We can't be sure about your loyalties. Now this is something I didn't expect. You behaving just like Sophia! It would seem that you two have much more in common than meets the eye. You both prefer to spend your time criticizing me rather than trying to contribute. Contribute, in fact. You could be helping me, helping us, somehow. How can we understand each other if you do not even try? Ding! Sophia is just a poor broken creature composed of vile and self-pity. A pinnacle result of Carmos's caring upbringing. But all in all, she is exactly that and nothing more. A product of the way this family works. She didn't just sprout out of the ground inherently bitter, you know. No, you and Carmosa forced her into this mold. You share responsibility for making her the little Miss Sunshine she is now. And where are you going with this? Am I to shower her with sentiment from now on? Why should I, considering the way she behaves towards me? Even if she was mistreated in the past, it is no reason to shut herself away from the world and bark at it from within her room like an angry dog. No, she made up her mind. She does not want me around her. I cannot change that even if I think that it is regrettable. I can't believe this is Gloria the Reasonable speaking now. The one who sees beyond her own selfish interests. If you do acknowledge the fact that you separated yourself from her in the past, why not try to force your way back? You can do this, Gloria. You can get your sister back. You just have to swallow your pride and try really hard. And so you recognize it as well. I am the most reasonable. <laughs> I am the only one here that actually does anything to keep up the house. That might be just a bit of an overstatement, Gloria. Each one of us puts some work into how this place works, for better or worse. We just have different perspectives, and so we give a different kind of input, but... Surely you realize how naive that sounds! It is something one might say to a slow child to spare its feelings. I've tried to help you both understand the importance of Carmos's rules, and yet I seem to be the only one capable of understanding the requirements to keep a proper household. Will nobody ever learn? How am I supposed to guide you and work alone against the laziness and stupidity of others? Hasn't it ever occurred to you that you might not have all the answers? Because that's the root of the problem, right there. 
You try to be our teacher or a disciplinarian. You have no knowledge that we lack, nor a higher status, and you are not our mother. Stop trying to imitate Carmosa. Is this how you think a sister should act? How should I know? Do any of you act like one towards me? Reason. Let's go for the neutral. Oh, such debate skills you have! Attacking me as a person clearly proves you are the reasonable and logic one. Logical one. I am not the one at fault here! You are not the only one at fault here. We all are. Reason dictates that all the sides of a conflict contribute to its current state, and so we all did. Let us assume that that is correct. What would you propose then? Then, Sophia and I would have to admit we were wrong to attack you and hinder your efforts to take care of the house. Oh, so true. You, on the other hand, would have to admit that you blindly mimicked Carmosa rather than using your own reason and abilities to best take care of the house. We all need to change our ways. If things are to improve, blame is not important. Refraining from our old habits and working together is. That does conjure up a good image. I think I would like such a change. One thing though. Do you really think I mimic Carmosa? Gloria, would you please stop for a second to think and answer one simple question truthfully? And what question might that be? She looks so angry. <laughs> what do you like to do? I... And no, I don't mean something that you feel obliged to do. Not a chore, necessity, or an assignment. What do you like to do? What makes you happy? What do you do just for yourself and nobody else? But... What are your goals? Where do you see yourself in the future? What will you do when Carmos is not here and you are not able to... And you are able to move on? Where do you want to go? I... I do not know. I just want to make everything better. This house should work as intended, and it should do so because of me. I want to make everyone happy and keep it all together. Fine. And when you accomplish that? What then? Imagine the house is running smoothly. Carmosa is proud of you and relaxed. All tasks complete. What would you do with all your free time then? I do not know what to say. Indeed, such a situation seems highly unlikely to occur, so I have not given it any thought. I... Who are you? What do you know about yourself? I... I do not know. Ding! I do not know why you are so mean to me! All I did was come here with an open mind to talk to you, find some mutual understanding. You get no understanding because there is nothing there to understand. You came here to reenact Carmosa in a statement of superiority. That is not true! I did intend, I did indeed try to get through to you. You simply would not listen. You didn't either. Get through to me? You came here with your air of superiority to boost your own conviction. You don't care about myself or Sophia. All you care about is you. This is pointless. I see no reason to listen to such nonsense. Especially since I did nothing to deserve such treatment from an immature brat. Both of you are trying to turn everybody against you. Then you will be able to whine about fate that brought you to living in cinders and pain. I must have had some kind of huge lapse of judgment to even consider treating you as a mature woman. Oh, look who's talking. Do you even understand the word mature, or is it just something you repeat after Carmosa? Fine, Cinders. Get out. Enjoy your freedom while it lasts. You have one more day till Carmosa returns. And I will not stoop to debating the order of things with you any further, nor try to teach you. You can go and do as you please for today. We'll see where your freedom gets you. Ha! <laughs> we both know you are powerless to stop me from leaving the house, or from doing anything for that matter, so you can stop pretending. Or did you grow accustomed to pretending too much, 
pretending to have control, to be self-confident, to be Carmosa. I do not have to listen to this! Goodbye! Wow, well, that was an angry conversation. Hello there, Hall! Let's see what new surprises you have in store for me today. Well, because I have to warn you, after the conversation I just had, I'm hard to impress. Hello there, early bird! Old. Only old surprises, apparently. You really should try harder next time, Hall. Having a conversation with a room? How bizarrely refreshing! It's good to see you too, Sophia. Now, I never thought I'd say something like this, but here it goes. Carmosa was right. Too much reading does make you crazy. Uh, but evidently it also makes you interesting. At least interesting enough to make my eternally uptight sister sneak into your room when she thought I wasn't looking. I seriously doubt she's that naive. Doesn't matter. The real question is, what did she want from you? Did she come to ask for help? So how many hours without the chance to struggle for Carmers' approval must have left that poor girl quite disturbed! Ding! Oh, you know our Gloria, a true stronghold of independence, a font of wisdom. I take it she came to spread her usual Carmosian propaganda among the little ones? Only to meet with steadfast resistance of the people. We will not be silenced, shouted the crowds. Oh my! It must have been quite the display. Did the guard intervene? What guard? If you're asking if there was any violence, then yes, plenty. The streets and squares practically turned red. Oh, how lovely! Was she hurt? Did you slap her? Um, no. I think that would have been going a bit too far, don't you think? My dear Simple sister, who can really say? Such things tend to be relative, you know. A one man's hero is a criminal to someone else. It's simply too complex for a girl like me to decide. So when it comes to Gloria, I don't analyze and stick to the golden rule. Violence is always the answer. I see. I think you've just given me a bit too much information there, Sophia. And you're such a chi- Oh, you're such a child sometimes! In case you didn't notice, we're living in the middle of a dangerous and unforgiving forest. This place is packed with wild, bloodthirsty predators. And whether we choose to see them or not, they exist. What a lovely thought! I will think about it on my trip through the woods today. Oh, you're going out again? I have to eat something first, but yes, I am going out. Why? Dang! Oh, I was just wondering what you... Do you actually do when you go out? Considering you have no money or friends to speak of. And noticing how much time those little trips to town can sometimes take you? I can't help but think that... Oh, it's silly! I know that I'm going to regret it, but alright. I'll play along. What were you thinking about? Probably meeting a man. Excuse me for being so bold, but, oh, uh, do you by any chance go to town to work? To do what? Oh, you know, to make coin independently. Are you asking me if I'm a prostitute? <laughs> what? To do what? What? Why did it... whatever. You are incredible! Thank you, dear sister. Remember that there's no shame in that line of work, Cinders. They say it's the oldest trade in the world! <laughs> I am going now. <laughs> I am going now. It must be hard, I know. Apart from the acts, there's still the little matter of bribing the guards, finding clients. Are you a prostitute? <laughs> you know so much about it. 
If there is someone I need to find, it's people I can talk to who aren't, you know, dead inside. You can always speak to inanimate objects in rooms, should you fail to find any living soul interested in what you have to say. Go to hell. I will be praying for you, dearest sister! She's a little crazy inside. Oh god, where do I go? Oh, I can only go to town. Let's go to town then! I'm glad this decision was made. Well, that's all for today, folks, but the story will continue. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon, evening, morning, or whatever it is, wherever you are. I will see you all in the future. TTFN and cheerio!